as we discussed in our previous lecture there are three compensators lag lead lag lead compensators so uh, we discussed is it not transient states steady states transient states are high frequency uh, I, transient states are carrying high frequency components and uh, steady states are nothing but low frequency components are present over there <coughs> so first we, we, we need to filter so after filtering out we need to correct the corresponding region okay so so while studying about the basics of compensators five things we need to uh, concentrate okay one is the electrical network okay for this for the compensators so one is electrical network i mean the circuit diagram for this compensator and the effects of compensators after adding this particular compensator what will be the effect in closed loop system likewise we need to uh, understand the effects of the compensators and the transfer function of the compensators and also the zero pole diagram and uh, the frequency response i mean the body plot of the corresponding compensators so here we are having the materials for lag compensators and lead compensators and lag lead compensators so these three compensators are having these five distinct terms network effects transfer function zero pole diagram and frequency response plot okay. so we'll see one by one now see <clears throat> lag compensators first of all it is a low pass filter okay so it will add some phase lag over the system okay so this is low pass filter so this is the network i mean this is the circuit for a low pass filter as well as lag compensator so by correctly choosing the values of r1 r2 c we can achieve the required output okay we can achieve the required phase value okay likewise uh, we can say this is the electrical network for lag lag compensator and these are all the effects of lag compensators okay this so this is the low pass filter is it not so as we know low pass filters are required for controlling the steady state period only okay so low pass this is the as this is the low pass filter this circuit will filter out all the steady state components okay so by using this lag compensator we can improve the steady state response of a system there is no change over the transient state okay because low frequency signals are passed okay the circuit will only allow the low frequency components by the way we are only allowing the steady state components steady state response we are uh, attenuated the high frequency components so these are all the effects so the steady state response is improved means what what is called that improvement during the steady state period our objective is to reduce this steady state error steady state error should be 2 or 5 percentage okay so that is achieved here Okay. steady state error can be reduced this is all because of by correct design of that lag compensator okay for your system okay for your plant r1 r2 c value should be chosen correctly then only the steady state response can be improved otherwise we need to redesign the network okay so this is the network uh, this is the effects and see this is the transfer function of that compensator g c of s we already know it is it not g c of s is nothing but the transfer function of compensator so zeros this is pole z z uh, that z p z is nothing but zeros of the compensator poles of the compensator see this is this is already derived okay s uh, s plus 1 by t divided by s plus 1 by beta t beta is the parameter that is deciding the values of r1 r2 r and uh, c okay so t should be greater than 0 beta should be greater than 1 you need to memorize these terms so zc is nothing but minus 1 by t b uh, pc is nothing but i mean the zeros and poles values are here and uh, zero pole diagram if you are plotting this zeros and poles on a s plane the x axis is real part y axis is in the imaginary part okay as we are having beta is greater than 1 so 1 by beta t i mean the pole will present in front of uh, the zeros okay we can say that uh, there will be a right side pole to the zeros 
for lag compensators okay in in other words zeros of the lag compensator is greater than poles of that same lag lag compensators okay zeros will be greater than pole okay so this is the zero pole diagram and this is the frequency response of lag compensator so this is gc of j omega angle of gc of j omega so this is the this is actually the bode plot uh, in x axis we are taking logarithmic omega okay log omega scale we are taken we have taken this is the magnitude plot this is the phase plot okay for this circuit for this transfer function this is the bode plot i mean the frequency response okay so phase lag this by by adding this this network with your system this network will add minus 20 db per dk okay so it will you can add some amount of phase lag and this phase lag can be measured by means of this formula 20 log of 1 by beta so the deciding parameter is nothing but beta here okay and this is the phase uh, plot of this particular lag compensator and this is the phase lag provided by this compensator pi m and these three things are nothing but the uh, corner frequency is 1 by beta t and 1 by t root beta 1 by t this is the these are all the things related to lag compensator which is a low pass filter okay now we will see about lead compensator so <clears throat> lead compensators are the high pass filters okay so high pass filters which which means we are going to filter out all the high frequency components i mean the steady state response can be filtered out by applying this lag lead compensators okay so this is the electrical network for this lead compensator this is actually the circuit for high pass filter okay what are the effects of adding lead compensator to your circuit absolutely first thing transient response is getting improved there is no change over the steady state response because this circuit this network will fit uh, attenuate all the low frequency components it will only allow the high frequency components so we are not considering we are not taking the steady state response in account so there is no change in steady state response so with the help of transient state okay we are only having the transient state in our hand so it can speed up the trans response okay so this can be uh, uh, understand understood by uh, by means of considering um, this point i mean uh, we are working with high frequency components frequency is high then time will be low okay so the speed up the response the response speed will be more okay so which means um, actually we need to understand this thing um, i mean transient response is getting improved improvement in transient response is nothing but reducing this transient response reducing the overs uh, overshoot value so speed up the response means the transient state is getting reduced so we quickly reached we quickly crossed with the transient response so speed up means this is the concept okay so transient state is getting improved how it is improved by reduce by increasing the speed up speed and also by reducing the overshoot next point is overshoot is reduced bandwidth is increased working bandwidth is somewhat improved because there are more number of frequency components are available in this particular period so the system is working with more number of signals frequency range i mean the band uh, bandwidth is getting improved so these are all the effects by using lead compensator in our design so this is the transfer function of lead compensator uh, here the parameter alpha is included need to uh, note that alpha is less than 1 beta should be greater than 1 for lag compensator beta is the only deciding parameter that is that should be kept as greater than 1 for lead compensator design the alpha should be taken which is less than 1 so zero and poles of the values of the lead compensators are minus 1 by t and minus 1 by alpha t so this is the zero pole diagram so while taking this is minus 1 by t this is minus 1 by alpha t this is the pole and uh, see uh, we have taken the value of alpha is less than 1 is it not so minus 1 by alpha t i mean the pole of the lead compensator will be greater than 0 of that compensator so first the zero will be appear here and then the pole will be appear here this is the zero pole diagram so once you are keeping the value of beta and alpha of the lag and lead compensator respectively 
you can easily draw the zero pole diagram of that circuits okay see this is the lead compensator this is the frequency response this is magnitude plot and this is phase plot so this circuit will will leave the phase okay if you this see this by by seeing this frequency response you can understand it will give some add up phase okay so it can increase the phase of the system if you want to increase the phase of the system you can use this lead compensator see this is the slope increasing slope it is having the amount of increased gain can be controlled by calculating uh, it is possible by using this formula 20 log by 1 by alpha this is the phase uh, somewhat increased by means of these compensators okay these are all the things related to lead compensators let me move to lag lead compensators lag lead compensators as its name says lag lead okay this compensator is having both lag compensator and lead compensator okay so our objective is to work with both to improve both uh, response is it not we need to improve the steady transient state as well as steady state okay we cannot take uh, one and one uh, we we not uh, we should not keep uh, another one as uh, uncontrolled okay so we need to control both the responses so we need both the circuits lag lead compensators okay so this is the electrical circuit diagram you can see the diagram um, see lag compensator is having rc series that series combination in parallel with the r1 see lead compensators uh, rc parallel combination that is series with the one parallel r2 resistor see just combine two of these circuit this will give the circuit this is called bandwidth band pass filter okay one rc in parallel that parallel combination is series one rc in series that series combination is parallel with this so this is what band pass filter so this one consist of both lag and lead compensators okay so effects let me combine both the two uh, compensators effect here both steady state and transient state can be improved overshoot and steady state error can be reduced okay overshoot is reduced by lead compensator steady state error is com re uh, reduced by lag compensators lead network is increasing the speed and increasing the bandwidth these are all the effects of using lag lead compensator this is the transfer function okay see uh, here we are going to use two networks okay two networks are going to cascade with the main plant okay so see so let's see this diagram so this is the plant to be controlled in series with the plant g c of s and one more g c of s we are going to add which means lag and lead okay so this is what uh, we are going to see so the, the series cascade compensators the transfer function as we know that block diagram reduction techniques okay series blocks can be multiplied together i mean the transfer function of series blocks can be multiplied together so transfer function of this lag lead compensator is equal to s plus 1 by t1 by s plus 1 by beta t1 this is lag section already we we studied this is lead section these two equations are getting multiplied together this will give the value of lag lead compensators i mean the transfer function of lag lead compensators okay other other things are same t1 and t2 is greater than 0 okay t, this is not t actually t1 and t2 is greater than 0 beta is greater than 1 alpha should be less than 1 okay so for lag design beta is the only parameter we need to take the beta value greater than 1 alpha should be less than 1 okay so this is the zero pole diagram based on the value of beta and alpha the value of beta is greater than 1 so initially i mean uh, first the pole of the lag section will appear minus 1 by beta t1 then zero of the lag section then zero of the la uh, lead section and pole of the lead section so <coughs> this is the zero pole diagram this is the frequency response plot of lag lead compensators okay so initially so see that there is a reason for uh, calling this compensator as lag lead compensator we are not calling this lead lag compensator we are calling it as lag lead compensator because based on the frequency response plot see this is frequency uh, logarithmic frequency that is taken in x axis initially we will we will have low frequency signals only okay so based on the plot first you have to 
meet the low frequency signals then lag section will work okay after that high frequency signals will be appear for that lead section will be there so based on that frequency spectrum first lag compensator will work then lead compensator will continue the work so that is why we are calling it as lag lead compensator okay based on the frequency spectrum only we are calling this compensator as lag lead compensator so we can see that first initially there is a phase lag in um, in the circuit and then there will be a phase lead so the same thing minus 20 db per decade phase lag the same 20 db per decade phase lead okay so with the help of this circuit i mean the lag lead compensator will help you to improve both transient state and steady state response by correctly designing this equation i mean by correctly choosing this r1 c1 r2 c2 we can achieve these things